What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. How y'all doing today? I'm doing pretty good myself. But well, anyways, let's get right into this video. So in today's video, well, actually today's video is not really on any specific car, but I am doing it on a uh, Chevy Express 3500. This is just for like big buses and stuff. Some people don't know how to hook these up, but I'm gonna show you guys the easy way. So today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to hook up backup beepers, the things that make noise when the cars are in reverse or whatever. Uh, we do a lot of these on the Boys and Girls Club buses because it's mandatory for kids. So when it's in reverse, they gotta know to get out of the way. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install those the easy way without doing all too much wiring. This one does consist of a little bit more because the brake light, the brake lights are further up than down, like the, uh, like the Fords. Fords are a lot easier, but unfortunately we gotta do a Chevy, so let's get into this video. I'm gonna show you guys how to hook these up. Let's roll with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is take out the uh, take out the reverse light. You can do either side, left or right, doesn't matter. I'm gonna do the uh, I'm gonna do the right side just because just because I'm the right-handed maybe. <laughs> but uh, it should be one, two, three, uh, three ten millimeter bolts. It looks like. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get those out real quick. You have to take out the light, and you have to take out this top piece right here, the top piece. So let's get all three of those taken out. Okay, I'm gonna set up 10 millimeter and I'm done. All right, so we got those three screws taken out. I think the top part has to come out first. Oh, another thing with this top part, it's probably not gonna wanna come out because it has the screws as well as on the inside, there are two, uh, there's two, uh, two push pops. So you gotta get a screwdriver, probably pop it out from the backside. I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing out real quick. They're retarded. Nothing on Chevy's easy. Uh, actually, I lied. Let me not say that. So top part's out. Now we're gonna go back down to the regular headlight. That should be one more screw in the back right here. Headlight comes off. So when you get the headlight out, you wanna go to whichever one is the, oh, this one has something inside of it. I'll figure out what that is later. You wanna find out which one is the reverse. The reverse is obviously the white one, the bottom one. It's gonna have, in my case, two, hold on, let me see if you guys can see it. Yeah, in my case, two wires. Obviously, one's a ground, one's a power. You, I mean, you can, if you want to, uh, get a test light, see which one is which, but in my case, I already know black is gonna be ground. Green is gonna be power, so. Oh, uh, here's the freaking rain again, bro. Shit, making me mad. So once you, when you find out that which one is power, what I did was, I got some of these little wire splicing tube thingies. Some of these right here, it's just a little plug. And then you got this part right here that splices into another wire. You crank it down and close it. This piece goes on the back. Put it right in just like that. And hold on, rain just started. I gotta put my camera up and then come back to you guys once it stops raining again. All right, y'all, so I'm back now. The rain finally stopped. Jeez. Anyway, where was I? Okay. Take the light out, like I was saying. Once you figure out which one is power, you're gonna get your little splicer and splice it. But in this case, I wanna make it like a wire. I wanna make it kinda tuck because I don't want it to look all shabby and, you know, so what I'm gonna do is, since the wire goes inside, I'm going to put this back because there's no way I can wire this down to where it's gonna be at and it not look tacky, so. Put this back. All right, so to make this look more professional, I'm going to, oh wait, maybe I might be able to put you guys inside the car. 
All right, so I don't necessarily know how good you guys can see, but it's pretty good. So since I found out that my wire is back behind here, and I want to make this look a little bit more professional, I'm going to take this back piece or this side panel off and expose back here because my green wire goes right here. You can't really see, but yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but my wires are inside of here. My green wire is right here. Can't see it that great, but my green wire is in here. I'm going to get my green wire, get my splicer like I was showing you guys, my little splicer. Put it on my green wire from in here. I doubt you're gonna go to squeezes with your hands. I have very strong fingers and I can't even do it. Gonna get some pliers. All right, there. Got my connector on. It's crimped down. It should be a you should be able to feel like a little pinch. And it should be on there. Crimped it all the way down. See that part. Then I'm gonna get my other butt connector and First, I'm gonna get my wire. Cause you gotta wire this, so you're gonna need some wire. I got some red, just some red wire. And I'm going to strip my wire. Strip your wire, easy. Put it inside, put the connector on it. And make sure you crimp this down really good. Cause you don't want this to come apart. Crimp it down. This lighting really sucks ass. Anyways, you get the gist of it. Crimp it down. Connect that to my little connector, that's on my power. And there's my power. To make this more professional, I'm gonna put everything behind here so no one can ever see it. And then you wanna measure, because, okay, so I'm putting this outside. Let me get my camera back, right? Since I'm putting it outside, I wanna measure how long it's gonna be from up there all the way to the bottom of the car. I should only about that much. That's probably still a little bit too much. Make sure that you, whenever you're using wire, make sure you always cut a little extra because you never know what kind of little hiccups you might run into that might cause you to have to use a little bit more. Next, what I'm gonna do is put all my inside stuff back. Make sure this a little bit. Now I'm gonna put all my inside stuff back. Sure your wires out of the way you do not want to pinch your wire in here because for the fire because this is a ground inside of here is a ground and this is power you don't want to start a fire so next thing we're going to do is because i feel like i mean this is not for every vehicle some vehicles might be different but in my case i found out a better way to do mine is to run it up under everything right down through the body up under because the backup peepers they only need to be on the, on the bottom of the car somewhere hidden so you don't gotta put it in no special place, but I do feel like up under here is a better, neater area because no one can see the wire. So what I'm gonna do next is pop this up. I'm gonna run my wire up under this, and I found that a good spot for me would be about right here. This goes straight down, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. This goes straight down to under the car, right where I'm going to place my butt, my beeper at. So I'm just going to get a little hole, make a little hole. Drill me a little hole about right here. Make sure it's a nice clean little hole. Put my wire down in there. And it should come right, right out of the bottom. Just like so. Now you got your nice little wire running. No dangerous things are gonna happen down here. It's not gonna catch on fire. And after that part, we can go ahead and put this back on. Put our little cover back. Again, make sure that you watch because these have clamps. You don't wanna clamp your, you don't wanna clamp your wire. Get my plate put back down. There we go. And that's pretty much it for the wiring part. Well, as far as power. Now everything's back together. Looks like nothing's ever been done. And 
next we're gonna go ahead and get our beeper so we got these beepers online don't really know how much but let me pull you guys back up and here's the rain again this is really going to piss me off today just regular backup beeper and since we bought it online i always suggest because ew this one smells burnt that's exactly why i'm about to tell you this next step so i always recommend whenever you buy stuff online because you never know how it works is to test it out and make sure that it works before you install it to whatever you're going to install it into let me cut my radio off because i don't want to get copyright i literally only have about 10 seconds so let me hurry up and cut that off Cut my fan off so you guys can hear. So the way that I test this is because it just has a on it it says power and ground. Has a regular power and a ground if you guys can see that well. But yeah, see, power top, ground at the bottom. You just wanna connect it to a power and a ground. I have a battery charger right here. Boom, just regular battery dropper. And I'm gonna connect my power and my ground to my power and my grounds on the beeper just to make sure that everything works how it should. Obviously, it's gonna give me a hard time. Power, connect your power, and then I'm turn my battery charger on and give it some juice. And it works. So now we got the under control, we can go back and finish our job. Here's the, I hate Florida so much. Here's the rain again. And I don't have a, this is not a GoPro, so I don't have a uh, camera cover to put on this camera, so I have to keep stopping it when it rains because I don't want my camera to shred out. This camera cost me 900 bucks, and I would hate for 900 bucks to just go right in trash like that. Let's wait on the rain for the fourth time. All right, guys, so the rain finally cleared up a little bit. It's literally just not stopping, so I hop on the camera as soon as it got done so that I can have a little bit more time, but it's still thundering out here. I'm just gonna make this quick. I really don't have time to keep waiting for this rain because it's almost time for me to go home, and I'm trying to go home, so we're gonna do this thing quick. All right, so next thing we wanna do is, we already got our power wire set up. We need some ground. That's the black ground. You don't really need much ground. The whole under the car is ground, so splice. Uh, these are from Snap-on. They're very old, as you can see. One side doesn't even have a thingy on it anymore. But they work like a dream. And they're some of the best ones that I have. But now we need some connectors. This is a small gauge wire. So I'm gonna use some small gauge connector. This time you're gonna need this one. Why am I bending down when I can, you know what? Whatever. I'm gonna use a small little, make sure, well, if you use small, make sure that it's enough to where your screw fits in the hole. I know mine do, so. Crimp it down. Another one for my other end, put it down, puncture it. So now what I'm gonna do is, since I've already talked, the negative side is a lot less complicated. I'm gonna put our negative side on, tighten it up. And this is the more complicated part because I'm going under the car now and it's wet. All right, so what I'm gonna do now Pretty much just gonna go up under the car, find a nice spot, screw it up. And once I get it screwed up, I will show you guys after I finish screwing it up. All right guys, so here's the buzzer. It's right in the back. Drilled it down to a little self-tapping screw right to the bottom of the body. It's not going anywhere, no play in it. And with my ground, I literally just put on the ground over here and wired it right to where I screwed the screw in. That's a perfect ground right there. My power wire runs up into here. I'm gonna get a little thingy to tape it up here, like a little screw thingy to tape it up here so it'll stay. And yeah, that's pretty simple. Now for the main test, let's see. My ass is all wet. This is ridiculous. I hate Florida so much. I hate it so much. But this will show you guys the self tappers. I use just some regular little screw, self tapping screws. Easy cost nothing. Anyway, that's how you do that. Now time for the main test. Let's see if it works. Turn the key on. Uh, when you put it in reverse, it should be like a normal one. There we go. Boom. That was very simple. Now again, this all of that stuff that I just now did, that don't go for every car. 
but I mean it is a good spot to do it because it's right in the back instead of running the wire all the way from up here to the back it's very simple to just connect it to the reverse light and then just ground it to the car run your wires and drill it to the bottom of the car and it's fine exactly where it is it's not going anywhere perfect spotting professional looking and nobody will ever know that it's there until they go up on their car and check it so anyways thank you all for watching I'm going to end the video here gonna put this thing back together put all my tools up and yeah that's pretty much it for this video that's how you put that's how you install the backup buzzer the professional way again you can't see any red wire you can't see no wires anywhere you can't see anything that I did until you go under the car and you still can barely see anything I did so yeah thank you all for watching as usual and I'll see y'all in the next one